morning to good morning, all good morning good morning thanks sir um okay let's just wait a couple minutes before we get started um karni if you could give us a visibility in terms of uh, whether it's good to go from the audience end is everything smooth and can they see us right now we started the webinar so we can start any minute and uh, we are good to go okay okay great great just wait another minute Just requesting all new speakers who are joining to kindly rename yourselves, um, and then we can get started. Yeah, it will be joining in five minutes. Okay, okay. Got it. Got it. Okay, great. With that, uh, I'd like to start today's uh, session. I would like to first thank you all for joining. Thank you so much for taking the time out to spend some time discussing and speaking about India's progress in its mechanization journey. And before um, we finally begin the session, I'd just like to do a quick um, introduction into what the session is about and who we are as an alliance and as, and, uh, as U20. Um, so as, as you are all familiar, uh, today we've come together to spend um, some time discussing a webinar on uh, manhole to machine hole implementable solutions for Indian cities. And this webinar, this webinar is co-curated by the National Fecal and Septic Sludge Management Alliance, along with, um, in collaboration with NIUA, the Technical Secretariat for Urban 20, which is the engagement group of G20. So the idea for um, today's webinar is to come together to showcase progress and achievements in India's mechanization journey, under the Safai Mitra Suraksha Challenge, which falls under Namaste, and drive knowledge sharing of some of these priorities, and also showcase best practices and systems and processes in the cities of Navi Mumbai and Nellore, and um, and you know have a have a shared discussion in terms of what our priorities are moving forward. Um, so with that, I'd like to hand over to Professor Chari to take this forward, and um, just a quick note for all the participants on this call: um, there will be a Q and A session. Uh, towards the end and there is a QA and a box where you can put your questions in as well and then uh, we can take the discussion forward accordingly. Uh, so with that handing over to you Professor Chari to take this from. Uh, thank you, thank you uh, Elizabeth uh, for <clears throat> giving me this opportunity to moderate this session. Uh, first of all I would like to thank So uh, I think uh, others are joining, uh, Mr. Dinesh Kumar and Mr. Dr. Baba Sahib, all of them are joining now. Meghna is here. So thank you all. Uh, Tharani for uh, you know, joining from NAUA. Uh, this is uh, one subject at the national level uh, that there is no disalignment. We may have disalignment on many of our subject areas, be it Amrut, be it Swachh Bharat, be it urban agenda, we could have multiple perspectives and multiple ways of development. But this is prevention of deaths and ensuring human dignity of sanitation workforce is something there is a national consensus. I think nobody would deny it. Now, having said that, as I speak, even this morning, there is a report of human death in one of the provinces, one of the states. Yesterday, there was one more. We keep track of 
incident analysis on a daily basis. Uh, in this six months, starting from January this year, we had 84 deaths. This is a, a significant cause of concern. While we all align on this issue, we all are committed to prevention and we are all committed to enhancing the quality of life and dignity at an individual level, organizational level, national level the incidents continue to happen. And that is the reason, even at the Prime Minister's level, Safai Mitra Suraksha program and Safai Mitra Suraksha challenge was initiated. I think is one of the few instances of great significance that Honorable Prime Minister took upon himself to ensure that India becomes zero incident country. As I said, when we do this incident analysis, I'm setting the context a bit. It's very important to understand the context. It's not about, but if you deep dive the analysis, they are not sewer deaths. Many of these incidents, and I will say exact number, 64% of these incidents are in septic tanks. And if I further break down the deaths and incidents. We don't even capture incidents, unfortunately. We capture only mortality, not morbidity and related. Many of them, again, 40% are in the private properties, hotels, restaurants, and so on and so forth. So it is not always that governments outsourcing contracts, governments outsourcing some works, and people are entering into confined spaces. But even most of these significant number of these incidents are happening in private properties. And then I think nothing has been done to a great extent except paying a universal 10 lakh compensation across the country. The standard cost of human life is 10 lakhs. Came from judgment of Orissa High Court, Honorable High Court. And that's been replicated everywhere. Now, it is in this mahol and context, there are some leaders, thought leaders, there are some officers, there are some cities who are doing exemplary work and paving the way for us to learn and replicate. And shame and try to replicate in other cities and towns that we are working. So today we would have three presentations, four presentations, I'm sorry, who are thought leaders in this space. We're going to share how this menace, how this issue of human safety and dignity in sanitation could be addressed. And what are the lessons all of us at an individual I call not just government's responsibility, it is an individual social responsibility, corporate social responsibility, and of course, government responsibility. It is in this context that this conversation is organized by the Alliance in partnership with the NIUA. Phenomenal work has been done in Orissa, in Navi Mumbai, in Nellore, under different leaders. And today the conversation is with these thought leaders. And before wasting too much of time, I now invite uh, Mr. Mativatanan, who is a senior officer from Indian Administrative Service, a torch bearer in the sanitation space, uh, set an example on many fields, particularly in the field that we are discussing about. He's a principal secretary in the municipal administration and urban development department. Thank you very much, sir. And I request you to deliver your keynote. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Chari, uh, for the kind introduction. And uh, thank, I thank the NFSSM Alliance and the NIUA for uh, giving me this opportunity to be part of this uh, webinar in the deliberations. So <clears throat> it's a subject very close to our heart. 
So matter of national concern, as Professor Chari said, deaths happening in this epic tanks, sewer lines, it's a it's an it's a national shame. So all of us are very concerned about that. Thanks to government of India and various state governments, we have a number of schemes. There are plethora of laws and policies and schemes. Uh, but <clears throat> so the implementation has always been a problem. So I am happy that lots of initiatives are being happening, including the latest Namaste scheme, which would be implemented at the national level in all the states. Again, it's a beginning. We have to go a long way. And I'm not sure whether Namaste covers the rural areas or not. Does it? Does it cover the rural so it areas? Does, it does mention some convergence with the Department of Drinking Water and Sanitation as well, as far as the ERSU setup is concerned. As Professor Chari said that majority of the incidents, accidents, deaths do happen in the septic tanks not in the sewer lines, not in the manuals. So roughly closer to 75 to 80% of the incidents, accidents, and, and the consequential deaths have happened in the septic tanks. And if you take the sewer system in the urban area, it's only about 15% of the cities that have been sewered. The underground sewer system is limited to few. If you take the country as a whole, the percentage of the sewer system would be negligible. It won't be even 2-3% of the whole population. So, mechanizing the manual, how far that's going to prevent human death involved in the sanitation work will still remain as a concern unless we target the septic tank irrespective of whether the septic tanks are in the urban areas or in the rural areas covering all next is that where are these deaths happening do they happen in the in the road the, in the sewer lines or do they happen in the septic tanks in the institutions or in the private properties more than 80% of the incidents where the deaths have happened have happened in the private properties, in the household septic tanks and the septic tanks in the commercial and the institutions. So how are we going to prevent it? How are we going to mechanize the septic tank entry and septic tank cleaning? So the, the subsidy arrangement or the, uh, the loan scheme which the urban local body or the PSSOs can avail, how many PSSOs will come forward and avail the scheme, invest their money also and procure these machines and deploy. I am only raising questions. It's for all of us to find answers. So how many PSOs are willing to invest money and avail the capital subsidy or interest subvention and use that in the in their day-to-day -day oper cleaning operations? Will the ULBs invest in it? Are they in a position to invest? Will mechanization alone ensure that th there won't be any debt? So mechanization is definitely a path towards prevention of death to bring in safety and dignity for the sanitation work. No doubt about it. But my uh, concern is that we should not emphasize too much on the mechanization. The human element has to come first. It cannot be machine centric, it has to be human centric. The sanitation worker has to be at the center of our schemes. 
the nanoplastic scheme the, that itself is a sanitation ecosystem. Though mechanically it's not as good. It has to address the sanitation ecosystem as a whole. Only can we uh, can we switch off the disturbance, please? Thank you. Only then the safety and dignity can be ensured. So my, uh, I just want to flag that too much focus and concern, uh, emphasis on the mechanization may not yield the desired results unless our focus is on ensuring the safety and dignity of the poor sanitation workers. What Odisha has done in September 2020, we have come up with the Garima scheme. The scheme is named, the objective of the scheme is to bring in safety and dignity for the poor sanitation workers. In the sanitation spectrum itself, we have distinguished between poor sanitation work and non-poor sanitation work. Unless you categorize these segment of the sanitation workers separately and address them and target them and address it, as long as we club them together, then we will miss the focus. The attention will get diluted. So there is a need for categorizing these people who enter into the septic tank and the sewer lines and manholes and handle the human fecal matter they have to be treated separately. They have to be tra targeted separately. They are, and we need to bring in interventions to ensure safety and dignity of them, that particular segment. Odisha has done that. We have categorized them as poor sanitation workers. We have mechanization is part of our Garima scheme, but that alone is not. We have plethora of other interventions like we have, first of all, we have, we have recognized that the manual scavenging do exist. That's the first step we have done. We accept that whether we like it or not, whether it has been banned or not, the manual scavenging do exist. That's the reason that deaths do happen. We recognized it and then we, we and then we started thinking how do we prevent that? How do we avoid? How do we what are the interventions required? So we took, we took up the enumeration of the poor sanitation workers so that we can take up targeted interventions. Their interventions would be more focused, not widespread and get diluted. So we have done, we have taken up that enumeration, enumeration of the poor sanitation workers in all the cities, 115 cities and validation of those poor, poor sanitation worker, cross validation, multiple level of verification, finalizing them, then issue ID card to them. That's a sign of recognizing. ID card has been, state ID card has been issued to them. And then a number of, we have created the database. We have given a unique ID number for each poor sanitation worker. Then what we have done is that we have recognized the poor sanitation work in the in the wage order. Many of the states, you may be, since you are working in the sector, you may be knowing that the sanitation work is not even a classified work. It has not, have, not, not even categorized as a uh, skilled or unskilled or uh, semi-skilled. It's, it, it's not only an unorganized, in the unorganized sector, it's not even recognized in the wage order, in the workers' compensation order. So what Odisha has done is that we have categorized them as skilled and highly skilled. Two categories of poor sanitation workers. And those who enter the septic tank, those who enter the sewer lines have been categorized as highly skilled worker and we are paying the highest level of wage, which resulted in 50% wage hike for them. And there is no other work more hazardous than entering into a septic tank where if there is an accident, 70%, 75% is the fatality rate. If this can't be categorized as risky and hazardous, what else can be categorized? So this has been classified as a hazardous uh, occupation and we have introduced a special category called risk and hazardous allowance at the rate of 15% on the wage rate. 
So when we talk about security, financial security also is equally important. Why they are voiceless? Why they are they 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 lead this indignified life? Is that they are voiceless? Why they are voiceless? They are educationally deprived, economically deprived. They have no other go other than this. My only concern, fear is that our mechanization effort with the honest intention of bringing in dignity and safety should not deprive them of their job opportunity because they have no other way, no other go. They are not educated. They don't have any other skill set. By generation, they have been doing this. They have not acquired qualification and it's only by do doing this, they are able to continue to do this. They have acquired this skill. We have never upgraded their skill sets. Thank you, sir. So this mechanization should not deprive them of their livelihood. And they should not start resisting this. Mechan in the why our, our schemes have failed to yield, yield result is the sincerity in implementation. There has never been a lack of political will in our country. There is abundant political will. We have visionary leaders. We are fortunate. But what is lacking is the administrative will, by and large. The sincerity in implementing the scheme. My only concern is that when you talk about mechanization and if you provide subsidy, our systems should not think of misusing it. It should not become a procurement procurement of machinery and somebody should not making money out of it. Sure. Somebody should not be making margin out of that. And it should not be procured for the sake of procurement, not for bringing in safety and dignity. The, the implementation, uh, these are all implementation uh, uh, pitfalls. Yeah. Unless we have a strong administrative will, and unless we have commitment, sincerity in uh, uh, transforming the situation is the this plight. Yeah. I'm afraid that the efforts, the intentions, and the noble intention behind this may yeah. not see the results. So, my Thank submission you, is that we have enough laws, we have enough schemes, but we need to bring in more sensitivity. And we need to work towards achieving that at all levels. Now it is up to the states, up to the cities, and up to the teams to make use of these and make sure that we don't, yeah. and in our place, sanitation death do not happen. I thank NFSSM thank you, sir. and NIEF for this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> I think uh, uh, Mr. Mativathanan raised a couple of very important points and it fits very nicely to the, you know, this speaker. Uh, has raised a uh, a uh, couple of uh, very powerful messages that it is not that we don't have good policy. We do have good regulatory framework. We have political will. And third point he made was that mechanization alone will not get the desired outcome that we are looking at it. It is the human angle that we need to bring. And that's how the Orissa experience of recognizing them, categorizing them and uh, has high-risk sanitation workers, enumerating them, giving them a dignity of an ID card, giving special allowances, and ensuring a 360-degree approach to the problem of sanitation, safety, and dignity, I think is extremely, extremely relevant. Now, uh, Dr. Rajalesa, you heard uh, Mati sir speaking about the Principal Secretary Orissa, spoke about the human angle. And we understand that Navi Mumbai, under your leadership as a nodal officer of Swachh Bharat Mission, as well as Deputy Commissioner, has done some exemplary work. Apne jo safai mitron ke saath health checkup se leke cam benefits ko human touch apne aaye. Both up Navi Mumbai ka experience thoda bhot share kariye. And after that, you have public awareness jagrut kiya hai ki it is also the citizens' responsibility to ensure that they, when they call 
for a service, it is also their responsibility that they are not putting them to hazardous situations, including confined space entry. So, jo Navi Mumbai ka experience hai, thoda bot, particularly wo jo human stories hai, human angle, welfare angle aapne laya hai, uske baare mein uh, sabko bataiye. Thank you very much. Namaskar, sir. Sir, now say, I, we can hear you. We can hear you. Please yes, go sir. ahead. Uh, Respecters, Chadi, sir. Principal Secretary, sir. Kumar, sir, and all dignitaries. Uh, I am representing uh, Navi Mumbai Municipal Corporation on behalf of our uh, Honorable Commissioner uh, Sri Rajesh Narayakar, sir. Our city engineer, Mr. Desa, is also with me. Uh, uh, he is uh, also uh, more important person in uh, Sapai Mitra Suraksha Challenge because uh, all my technical uh, aspects are handled by our city engineer department. Uh, as a nodal officer, I am uh, representing the Navi Mumbai. Uh, we are we are having uh, uh, two two sixty uh, Sapai Mitra two sixty Sapai Mitras. And uh, our focus is that when we started Namaste program, before that we are uh, we are uh, focusing on our Safai Mitras and we are focusing on their families and uh, their social aspects. Next. Uh, uska full screen career or sir, full. Aapka time jo hai, saat, aat, minute mein thoda bot, uh, hai, kyunki, slides hai aapka. Achha, sir, my first take. My first uh, uh, sir, next. Apne, uh, Navi Mumbai city ke baare mein ek, uh, uh, main short mein batata hu. Our city's area is 110 square kilometer and uh, yes, yes. approximate population with floating population is 15 lakhs. In 2022, uh, we are uh, first in uh, Maharashtra and third rank in our country. And we are first city in uh, Maharashtra having a five star uh, certification and uh, first time we were water plus in Maharashtra. Uh, we are having two, 25 uh, gardens and uh, our solid waste management process and our plants are very uh, environment friendly. Uh, our uh, all vehicles, uh, corporation vehicles, are near about 60% vehicles are uh, CNG and uh, electric vehicles. And we are having uh, our own uh, dam. That's why we are uh, self-sufficient in uh, water supply. Uh, next, our existing uh, infrastructure uh, we uh, we are having near about ninety nine percent sewage network in our city. Our uh, city is a planned city, and uh, we are having. Uh, hello. Second. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, we uh, we are having ninety nine percent sewage network in our city. And uh, our, for our toilet uh, and our ACP and house uh, maintenance, we are having. Can you, can you somebody, uh, somebody in the office has opened? Elizabeth. Yes, yes, Professor Charlie is taking care of that. Uh, please uh, uh, mute your mics. Huh? Yes, and uh, Dr. Baba Sahib, your uh, uh, slides are not changing. They're not moving. Not changing? No, no, no sir, they're not changing. Now it has changed? Now, uh, my slide is a machinery available on in ULBs. Is it, is it correct? Uh, no, sir. It's on the first slide. Yes, yes, ma'am. Elizabeth, if uh, I think you have two uh, systems open, can you switch off one of them? Yes, yes. I'm, I'm just taking care of that. in the slides? Yes, now the slide is correct, sir. Yeah, next, next year. Uh, we are we are having 99% uh, sewage network in our city, and uh, all our contractors uh, for uh, STP for uh, uh, toilet and uh, pump house, all uh, contractors are uh, having a comprehensive contractor. Uh, one single contractor is doing every uh, uh, aspect, uh, aspect, taking care of every aspect of maintenance. We are having seven HTPs, uh, considering a 30 lakh population, and presently we are uh, having only 15 lakhs population. That's why uh, on 50% capacity, we are uh, using our HTPs. 
uh, our uh, sewer line cleaning and septic tank cleaning is totally mechanized and uh, we are having only 42 septic tanks at our uh, uh, yes, uh, public toilet and uh, community toilets only where it is not possible to connect with uh, sewer line. Next. There is no septic tank in our uh, residential area, uh, means uh, not any society there is no, uh, there is no septic tank. Uh, if we are think, uh, talking about, about equipments, we are having 11 uh, hydrovac equipments, 7 uh, grabber machines, 14 uh, desludging vehicles, 8 uh, sewer camera, 34 rodding machines and uh, 2 hydraulic uh, root cutters. Uh, as per CPHEO norm, uh, we are having more than uh, 150 percent. Some uh, equipments are 200 percent. Means more, uh, more than our capacity requirement. We are having uh, such equipments. Our one four four two zero hotline is there, and uh, other uh, uh, hotlines are also connected in our uh, control room. We are uh, regularly monitoring our one four four two zero complaints. There is a SMS and email system for complainant and officers also. Uh, two way we are communicating uh, from officers to uh, complainant and uh, even we are giving follow uh, feedback to complainant also. Next, uh, these are uh, our uh, information uh, means uh, these are our IEC uh, activities. And there is no informal worker in our uh, corporation uh, for. Uh, uh, cleaning and maintenance of uh, uh, sewer lines and our uh, plants. We are having a sufficient manpower and uh, supply mitras. We are taking their frequently training. Even we are taking care of uh, all the safety measures and uh, we are uh, uh, giving a, uh, uh, training of uh, mechanized cleaning uh, equipment and mechanic cleaning procedure. We are having uh, Level transmitters, the two hour 42 uh, septic tanks. Uh, level transmitters uh, uh, are working like the if uh, any tank is uh, uh, up to 75% or 80% level, we are getting uh, alarm in our uh, uh, control room. And uh, within 10 to 15 minutes, our vehicle will uh, uh, attend that complaint and they will uh, dislodge the, that septic tank. And these uh, septic tanks are only at uh, city and PT only. Though at places where it is not possible to connect to sewer line. Uh, in capacity building, we, we are uh, taking uh, their uh, all uh, uh, health cap uh, health uh, measures. Uh, we are taking uh, every three monthly. We are taking uh, health checkup camps. Uh, even we took uh, eye camp also and uh, the bone density. Maximum supply mitras having some skin diseases or some uh, uh, bone uh, dense, bone weakness problems. We took a bone density uh, camp also, and uh, not only we are taking uh, supply mitras uh, care, we are taking uh, in consideration their family also. Every three months we are taking uh, health camp of uh, supply mitra family also. Next. And those uh, where we are finding some major uh, health issues, we are shifting them to our hospitals and up to uh, final de decision. Means up to jab tak unka ye nahi hota ki unko kya karna hai aur unko kya treatment dena hai, tab tak unka pura ki pura our team is taking care of that uh, uh, sick person. Uh, we are taking citizen involvement also and uh, engaging. Uh, uh, certified trainer, trainers, uh, comprehensive uh, contractors जो के लिए उन हम हमेशा training देते हैं and awareness के we are we are showing some videos and uh, some uh, awareness uh, photographs also uh, next we are providing PPE kit we are uh, having a mechanized cleaning uh, sewer line and septic uh, tanks uh, mechanized cleaning system. We are giving allowances like medical insurance, PF facility uh, to all supply mitras, and uh, we are developing some uh, job for uh, supply mitras by giving, uh, providing them loans with uh, subsidized rate uh, from the government schemes. Uh, these are photographs of distributing uh, this uh, PPE kit and uh, uh, giving the training to them. Next. Uh, this is uh, video uh, monitoring, uh, means camera monitoring at the time of uh, sewer line cleaning. We are having uh, uh, equipments and uh, our vehicles with uh, 
uh, sewer line camera and we are monitoring when uh, this uh, jet uh, is inserted in the sewer line that time we monitor that uh, direction of jet from camera and uh, we uh, our staff can understand that uh, is there major uh, some uh, major uh, blockage or any uh, any other uh, destruction is there and like that we are taking measures uh, these are photographs of that uh, lever transmitters next uh, this is uh, uh, IEC material means the government has uh, directed to go for IEC and we did the IEC not only at uh, our plants we did in each and every society. And uh, with uh, this helpline 14420, we publish our uh, WhatsApp number also. And we uh, our WhatsApp number is also regularly working. These are uh, IECs at uh, bus stands, societies, and all places. Some societies are uh, miss such. A, we are we did the IEC in such societies. They were asking that what is septic tank and why, uh, why you are doing this uh, IEC because this, uh, these people they didn't know about. Uh, septic dam from starting they are uh, only observing that uh, there is a sewer line and uh, they were never never facing sewer line issue directly up to that uh, city and that's why they are they were not aware that's why they were asking ki ye kya hota hai aur kyun awareness kar rahe usi time unko pata chala ki apna sewer line uh, niche se jata hai aur wo ye sab uh, uh, stp pe jata hai aur water treatment karke wo pani uh, use uh, reuse kiya jata hai uh, we use mascots for uh, awareness with uh, children in the uh, garden. And children always uh, means uh, they were entertaining and they were uh, very curious that uh, why this mascot is coming here and what is this and what is Safai Mitra and why it is uh, like this. Means every time they were asking and they were curious. These photos of uh, awareness with children in uh, malls. Uh, this is awareness with our uh, bus and uh, means our corporation buses. Uh, we did uh, Dahi Handi, our traditional function in Maharashtra is Dahi Handi. We did uh, Dahi Handi with Safai Mitra and uh, we encourage them that to, uh, uh, we are with you for each and every moment. Uh, this is also uh, awareness for program. We are having uh, this LCD screen and on uh, LCD screen we uh, did uh, Safai Mitra awareness. Uh, these are uh, health camps in some camp where we found that uh, some uh, Safai Mitra having other uh, major issues. We shifted them to hospitals also. Uh, this is also awareness camp and capacity building uh, training uh, photographs. Uh, our goal is that for future we are planning for 100% network connection in our uh, city and 100% septic tank free city. Our, uh, we are 100% water secure and we are planning for that. Uh, sir, uh, as per with your permission, we, uh, a small video is there. I will show our awareness. So, so many videos are there, but I will sir, share one video. It is very. So, Dr. Rajale, sir, sir, I think we will uh, we will circulate the video to all the participants YouTube say, or कुछ questions लेते हैं भी थोड़ा बहुत questions भी लेते हैं. Okay, okay, thank you, sir. ये जो video बिल्कुल सबको काफी अच्छा. Yeah, video. I will I will share video. We are having three four videos of Safai Mitra, sir. Uh, we will circulate to all our uh, participants. And, uh, yeah. yeah, yes, sir. Yes, so sir. you can uh, take down the presentation. Now, I yes. think it's a wonderful experience, uh, for city experience, how you have practically invested uh, your energy, time, sensitivity in improving the quality of life of uh, Safai Mitras. I think this is a, a real benchmark and a role model. Uh, one question from my side, you know, just wanted okay. to get your views. Now, <clears throat> आपके पास जो नवी मुंबई के बगल में जो है काफी इंडस्ट्रियल क्लस्टर से थाने और कुछ कई जगह पे वहां पे सेप्टिक टैंक्स काफी भरे हुए हैं दो दे आर इंडस्ट्रियल क्लस्टर्स एंड सम हाउस होल्ड्स आर देयर बट देयर आर लॉट ऑफ सेप्टिक टैंक्स एंड देयर वाज सम इंसिडेंट्स आल्सो इट्स नॉट जस्ट विद इन द जुरिस्डिक्शन ऑफ म्युनिसिपल कॉर्पोरेशन बिकॉज़ यू हैव सिग्निफिकेंट सुअर सिस्टम बट द पेरिफेरल एरियाज हैव लॉट ऑफ नॉन सुअर सिस्टम्स नाउ Are you doing something about it, sir? Especially ESRU ka apne activate kiya. Is it also applicable for those peripheral clusters where incidents are happening? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, sir, the industrial area me incidences hue and we are uh, aware about that because whenever it is happening in periphery, directly call uh, comes to Navi Mumbai Corporation because people are thinking that it is of Navi Mumbai Corporation, but that is not our jurisdiction. 
but whenever such incidences are happening we are giving full support to them and we are giving training to their people we are uh, just giving uh, idea to which uh, how how machinery which machinery they should use and how to use that machinery and which uh, equipments they require sometimes we are sending our equipments also for the uh, some time being and we are asking them to purchase their equipments and take uh, measures and uh, i would like to share one thing with you that in one uh, seminar our commissioner sir uh, announced that we are starting a training program of safai mitras means uh, certified training program of safai mitras from our corporation excellent thank yes, you sir. sir thank you very much for sharing your uh, experience of navi mumbai which is fabulous now yeah. i move thank to you, mr Dr. dinesh kumar thank you uh, mr dinesh kumar has done a fantastic job uh, as commissioner of nellore now he is a commissioner of uh, uh, rajmandri now nellore also won during his tenure uh, the national award for under the safai mitra suraksha challenge now they have done nellore unlike navi mumbai is heavily dependent on uh, septic tanks on site sanitation systems but they have put in systems and processes and taken care of the uh, the dignity as well as uh, recognition as mr mativathan uh, mentioned about i uh, giving identification giving them space giving them welfare over to you mr dinesh to share your experience of uh, 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 of your own city but also your personal experience of how do we deal with uh, the hands the safai mitra suraksha at a national level as well as at a city and regional level what do you thank you uh, mr uh, i also would like to thank uh, uh, the alliance and uh, uh, all of the panelists who are here and especially kamati uh, sir uh, who has given a real inspiration for uh, young officers like us to replicate some of the good work that's happening uh, in the urban sector of uh, the state of odisha Uh, now coming to our own experience in Nellore, uh, as sir has rightly pointed out, Madhi sir has rightly pointed out. So uh, this, we all know that it's an unorganized sector uh, when it comes to uh, septage management, uh, workers involved in it come from the town road section. So it is completely unorganized. So we need to have, we need to deal this entire journey uh, with a human hand. So only then we can see the results. So when we took up this challenge, when Government of India has launched its Safai Mitra Suraksha Challenge, so we found out that we don't have enough systems and processes in place uh, to tackle uh, as per the guidelines. Uh, we we have the Manual Pro uh, Provision Act, Manual Standing Provision Act. So there are so many statutory guidelines which prohibit us, uh, which prohibit uh, human uh, humans entering into the sewers, and we see so many deaths. Even in Nellore, we have one of the death, one death, one death happening in 2018. So uh, when this challenge was launched, we took uh, stock of the issue. We identified what are the gaps, and then we tried to uh, mechanize the whole system. So we don't have an underground, uh, extensive underground uh, sewage network. So we do have septic tanks, and then uh, we have we have some of the discharging operators who are running private, and the entire sector is completely unorganized. So we we started making small small interventions in the city of Mellor. Uh, so initially, we bought all the private discharging operators on board. So uh, the entire service delivery, which is completely privatized and unorganized, was uh, bought under the ambit of or bought under the control of the corporation. So there is only one service provider in the corporation, Nellore Municipal Corporation, and we are trying to replicate. Uh, we are doing the same here in Rajmandri now. So that is the municipal corporation. So whomsoever wants to discharge. Or uh, all the discharging operators have to get license from the corporation, and they have to be they have to form a cooperative. So we have given them a space, we have uh, given them uh, a roster system, and then a single uh, command control system. So any any person who wants discharging as a service, they have to contact the command control system, and then as for the roster, uh, the discharging operators goes there and discharge. So why? I mean, what is the advantage of doing this? We need to understand. This entire discharging operation or management of sewage is completely unorganized. So there are only ideally in any city. Usually, this is what my observation is. There are only one two players who have money and who have muscle power will control this entire sector. So there will be many other players who uh, uh, who 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 doesn't have the capital who who 
can't invest in uh, uh, boning and dislodging machine. So they uh, work for the throwaway prices for these private claims. And that is how uh, this dignity of labor, uh, everything uh, comes under scrutiny. So what we have done, so we have ensured that capital reaches everyone for them to invest in the vehicles. So we took the help of the NSKFTC. So they are very uh, uh, quick enough and uh, sympathetic enough to extend all these loans at a great subsidized prices. So we found that we have shortlisted uh, all the uh, manual rack pickers or otherwise uh, people who are engaged. So when we have uh, surveyed, out of 350 people, there are only one or four people who are on our boards. So 244 people are working in for. So we can understand if they are informed, if they are working in for, if they are not on our goals, or if they are not even listed that they are working in this particular sector, we can imagine the life they will be having. So we bought uh, we bought formalization in the first day. So we have uh, with a with, uh, lot of inclusivity. So we bought all of them under NSKFDC loans, copy of the NSKFDC loans. So we got the loans issued and we ensured that they have one source of income at least. So either from either from dislodging or some other economic opportunities. So we opened up economic opportunities for this entire uh, uh, section. So there is a particular crash in Nello uh, which does this activity. So we we know how many people were there in that particular camp. They live at one place, of course, in the most unhygienic uh, uh, situations. So we surveyed that entire area. Uh, we listed them. We have so we have showed them alternate source of uh, income uh, using the loans of the NSKFT. So what this has uh, bought is uh, it has given uh, them a voice to demand a particular wage and a dignity of labor from the private office. So of course, there is standardization from corporation. So when we bought all these licensing cooperators uh, under the control of the corporation, we have standardized few things. We have told them that this is the protocol that we need to follow. And, and there is also demand from the locals who want to work with them. So all in all, we have to understand who are the stakeholders of this entire business. So when I take uh, when I take sewage or sludge management, so we have three two, two three important stakeholders. Uh, one is the, the corporation because it is the regulatory authority or the enforcement authority. Two, the private operators, because they have to provide uh, the dislodging services. Three, the public themselves, because they have to take the service. And four, and not but four, but not the least, the workers themselves who are working in this. So all the stakeholders, we have conducted a series of meetings with all the stakeholders. We found out, uh, uh, we found out what are their expectations from this entire uh, intervention that we have wanted. So we cater to each and every response. We cater to each and every demand. So we try to have a group discussions uh, and a series of uh, meetings with all of them. And then we found one formula where everyone agreed. So all in all, what has happened simultaneously, we have also taken up a, a huge public awareness uh, uh, campaign in 1442. We have a control room, we have a voting across, social media awareness campaigns. Uh, and, uh, and citizens themselves are coming forward and giving feedback about uh, the center new mechanism developed by the corporation. Uh, 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 so what has uh, what this has resulted in is uh, this has resulted in an increased dignity of labor, uh, a sense of security for the workers who are working, and also a, a committed work for the private operators. So the private operators often do this, we have to understand the problems of the researching operators also. So when I interacted uh, with them, so what they have told is they don't have a, a fixed business, fixed schedule of business. Because our citizens or uh, our citizens doesn't clean their separate times every three years, which is mandated as per the law or as per the bylaws of many of the corporations. So what we have done is we have geotagged all the separate times in the corporation. We maintain registers uh, in our such well and system and fix the responsibility to entity secretaries. So I and we have created business for all the operators. So every three years, now we made it mandatory for diligence to get this septic tank clean. So the private operators now have an incentive to be with the corporation rather than they going and doing business privately. So uh, we have to understand the problems of all the stakeholders, as I told, uh, 
So, so this has solved, uh, enforcing this uh, three-year aspect has solved many problems because now private operators have business. If they have business, they can uh, give good standard of living uh, and other things, uh, uh, good dignity of labor to the workers working. And since we have given the alternate source of income to uh, the workers, they, they are also in a position to demand. So all in all, this has uh, uh, transformed the way sector is managed in Bengal. Sure. Apart from this, uh, what we have done is we have taken one step ahead and uh, we took the responsibility of mechanization on ourselves instead of just leaving it to private operators. So we bought the PPE kits, uh, uh, all the machinery from the corporation, and we distributed it to private players. We told them that this is what we need to do. So yeah. whenever someone goes in a uniform, you know, there's a lot of change. So uh, all in all, uh, with small interventions, I think uh, we could bring some change in how this uh, unorganized center uh, is transformed into an organized center. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dinesh. I think uh, I'm aware of your work and then the fantastic, uh, uh, you know, uh, leadership you have extended uh, with a very strong uh, component of passion towards the subject. Greatly appreciate your contribution and work. Uh, what Nellur has done under the leadership of uh, Mr. Dinesh at the time was to organize the disorganized uh, market and also uh, create uh, increased demand for them by promoting scheduled desledging so that the number of trips went up so that there is a greater business opportunities. But equally important is that one of the major concerns is the parking space. Where do I park our trucks if there is a scheduled system? So he created a, the city corporation has created a dedicated parking space so that uh, the concerned drivers, cleaners and uh, Safai Mitras, they get spaced uh, to retire, they can eat their food, there's facilities created. So I think all in all, I think these examples are very useful to uh, sort of replicate and amplify what we have heard so far. Thank you very much. Uh, now, one question uh, which is uh, which came in the chat box, uh, Mr. Dinesh, is Nellur, uh, like many other small and medium cities, they have narrow gullies and narrow lanes. How could, could we address some of those concerns uh, in your, uh, from your experience, like we have this very, very narrow lanes in uh, Nellur where the trucks couldn't go. Uh, did we sort of, uh, that, that is one of the, uh, that is yeah. uh, one of the cause of uh, incidents and accidents. So would you like to comment, uh, Dinesha, on uh, how we dealt with the narrow lanes uh, in Nellur? Uh, one of the biggest problems in majority of our cities is the delimitation of these narrow lanes because they often get choked and it is uh, also one of the main reasons why we witness urban uh, floods. Uh, of course, we, we, when we started this, we also didn't have solution. Uh, so what we thought is we uh, we, we have used jetting missions and sucking missions that, that are there with us. And then uh, we have also partnered uh, with uh, one of the organization, uh, which is uh, funded again by Mahua. They have come up with the solution of drain mush. So this uh, this mission uh, specifically is designed to desilt narrow lanes in the cities. So uh, it, it can go into the lane as small as eight feet or nine feet. So uh, it is an, uh, it is ambiguous in nature. So you can go. It, it, it you brought in uh, certain technologies to uh, deal with the narrow uh, road widths and narrow lanes. So. Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, that information should be made available. This is one of the concerns. How do we promote uh, uh, desludging activity in uh, you know confined uh, you know geographies? And that's where the human entry and manual operations tend to get. Now I invite uh, Meghna, who's been a thought leader and working relentlessly in the space of uh, uh, you know Safai Mitra Suraksha. Uh, Meghna, you heard the whole uh, you know all the presentations. There are a lot of questions also in the chat box. Uh, there are some hands up. I don't know how to really respond to them because I'm not able to have the technology access who is raising hands, uh, but I can see some. Uh, so I think, uh, Elizabeth, we need to give space for some of the participants who wants to speak. And uh, so, uh, Meghna, you heard this. If you could kindly uh, brief uh, in a really uh, succinct way what this Namaste scheme is all about and how it could contribute this whole issue of uh, enhanced mechanization and prevention of human entry, but also give your own thoughts on 
the issues that are emerging, uh, what Mativatanan sir mentioned about uh, human angle, uh, what Navi Mumbai did about, what they mentioned about the peripheral areas, uh, there are still, still septic tanks. Some questions on narrow uh, lanes and by lanes, how do we deal with that situation? So if you could uh, uh, briefly speak about Namaste, but also touch upon some of those real life issues, I think that would be very, very useful. Over to you, Meghna. Thank you so much, Professor Chari and the Ecosystem Alliance, as well as NIUA for this opportunity. Um, and I think to set the context to also what you asked me to do, Professor Chari, I think I'm going to echo something that Mathi sir has also raised earlier, that it's, it's good to talk about mechanization, but mechanization itself may not solve all the problems. And this is also, I think, what a lot of questions that we are hearing from the audiences are, I think, pertaining to that. What is really required is systems strengthening right and across the value chain um maybe as talking about even if we have machines um do, are we deploying them in the right places do citizens know where to seek this you know uh, services for desludging requests even if we have the 14420 number uh we're hearing of different modalities in different states and different cities because uh, like we heard from Nellore, you already a lot of cities have a very, uh, very mature private desludging. You know, uh, uh, you know the whole ecosystem is already there. How are we going to ensure that they their livelihoods are not, you know, uh, you know are going to be hampered if we have this whole centralized call, you know, calls coming to one four four two zero, and then that's the way calls are going to be addressed. How so? How are we going to really see this whole one four four two zero system? being set in different contexts. Um, also different, even with the kind of private sector operators, um, how are we going to ensure that they have the incentives, they have the wherewithal to in invest their monies in these machines? Are they going to be empaneled? A very few handful of our cities are also empaneling all the private sector operators in our uh, across, if we see all across 4,000 odd cities. How are we going to ensure that all of these cities um, empanel their PSSOs so that the PSSOs know what to adhere to, which kind of advisories they need to adhere to, that they need to kind of loop in back service requests to 14420, all of those issues. Um, even when we have all of these machines in place, do we have the right monitoring systems in place? Uh, just to quote a, a case from a North Indian city, I'm not going to name the city, but very, very recently, we had the machine standing there, but we had a person inside the maintenance hole as well. Um, and there was just, because the city had outsourced this work to a private sector operator, there was just no monitoring happening from the city government. And lastly, also about the training ecosystem. How are we going to train workers to kind of understand how the, this mechanization works for, for them and how to they up, up their life, uh, their skill sets to be able to then manage these uh, machines, et cetera. So if I were to put all the barriers to worker safety, which is what the main intent for this uh, entire mechanization or this whole initiative for manhole to machine holders, I would bucket it into five main uh, buckets. The first is invisibility. And this is something Mathi sir has talked very passionate, passionately about even earlier that unless we know who our workers are, it's going to be a huge problem. If we don't know the universe of our workers, we don't know whom we are going to work with. The second is occupational hazards. And that's where the whole um, angle of even being, techno being technology, being the, bringing the machines, et cetera, comes into it. How do we actually minimize occupational hazards for workers? And the third is financial security. How are we ensuring that even if we have these um, the PSSOs, if we are having private contractors, if you have having independent workers come up and take this task, that they have, they are giving, being paid according to the skill sets that they bring to the table with the kind of risks they are actually, uh, you know, uh, meeting with every day. Um, a big chunk of this is the weak enforcement system, I would say. And I think everybody has actually spoken about it, that, uh, we have a plethora of laws, we have schemes, but how are we enforcing all of these mechanisms, right? Uh, it's good to show one model ward. It's good to show the things happen in one small part of your city, but when it comes to scale, when even within a city, and even when we're talking across 4,000 cities, how do we do this? Um, uh, even larger cities, municipal corporations, the municipal 
uh, the, the million plus cities still have the wherewithal in terms of the finances, in terms of capacities to do this. But what about our other cities, other municipal corporations, or smaller municipalities, which are mostly dependent on on-site systems? How are they going to really work with this monitoring? And I think that was this with this entire background um, that this whole namaste, this whole this new scheme or this um, which is being launched, which is being housed by the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment by the NSKFDC, but it's a convergent scheme with between Mosje and Mahua. Um, and essentially, you know, it, it's, it aims at bringing safety for two categories, two job roles, septic tank cleaners and sewer line cleaners. Um, so this is the main, because this is where the highest risk is there. And hence, let's first look at these two uh, job roles. Uh, if we, this is, this is yet to, I mean, this is, been approved, but it is yet to be formally launched across um, cities. Um, it's it's something that is going to be implemented by ULBs, by uh, housing and urban development departments of respective state governments. Um, so in very in close coordination between Mahua, between Moshe, um, but this is going to happen across the country. And that's where it's good to go to scale, but it's also that's where the challenges will come in because we have different cities, different sizes, different um, uh, uh, different sanitation ecosystems, and that's where it's one size is not going to fit all, and that's where I think it, uh, you know as we progress, that's where we're going to really bringing all of this learnings etc. Um, to the scheme. Um, very broadly, the intended outcomes are we want zero fatalities in the sanitation sector. We don't want um, sanitation workers to come in contact with human fecal matter. Um, the Also recognition as skilled workers, and that's where we, uh, the enumeration becomes extremely important. So uh, where Namaste, which is actually a, a kind of a changed nomenclature for the earlier scheme that Mosje had as the uh, scheme for rehabilitation of manual scavengers. Uh, which was also supposed to kind of uh, provide an immediate one-time one cash assistance to any uh, such people who are involved in manual scavenging uh, and then help them with alternate livelihoods, et cetera. But they were obviously, it, it, it uh, probably achieved some, some portion of what it had set out to, but looking at the kind of magnitude of the problem and learning from what we've learned from Garima in Odisha, um, these are the various components that we have um, brought in, uh, under Namaste. The first is profiling of sanitation workers in ULBs. This will happen digitally um, and then linking them up with all kinds of social entitlements, financial entitlements, capital subsidies, PPs. Also, when we talk about PPs, it's not easy to talk about PPs. And I'm sure under the Alliance, we've done a lot of work even under the tech task force to I actually articulate what PPEs are needed for what job roles, what kind of materials are required, um, and at what frequency do they need to be given. It's not a one-time thing. You'll have to revisit this entire thing every month, probably. So what is that regime in which PPEs need to be given? What are the safety devices in, 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 in cases of where you need uh, confined space entries to happen? Um, so I think all of this work is going to come under this. And also a, a big piece is also uh, uh, linking with citizens, that are citizens understanding that if there is some desludger coming to my house to desludge, what are the two or three things that I should know as a very common householder? So I think I'll stop here, but they, this is something that's the entire Namaste ecosystem. It's going to be launched very soon. Uh, it's going to come to all cities and ULBs will have to play a very central role in the implementation of this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Meghna. <clears throat> I think for uh, amplifying the importance of uh, uh, Namaste, but also highlighting the importance of recognition, enumeration, which I think all of you have taken up in the state of Odisha and now you're doing in Tamil Nadu and a few other places. Uh, phenomenal work. Thank you very much. Now, uh, there are quite a few questions that came up and uh, I think uh, many of you have already answered. I have two, three points before we wrap it up, uh, Elizabeth. Number one, uh, I repeat again, this is applicable for all of you, but I'll start with uh, uh, Mathivathanan sir and I'll followed by Meghna. 
as i said almost 35% of the deaths incidents are in the age group of 20 to 30 years sir number 1 number 2 one out of two deaths incidents and i'm speaking with accurate numbers not just published but it is actually collected very methodically is in the commercial and private properties now the question also came up in the chat box this is all fine governments are really doing well uh, be it uh, orissa government navi mumbai city and uh, quite a few other cities like uh, mr dinesh from nellur and others spoke about it but many of the operations are outside the realm of the city administration so the private operator is calling them commercial building is calling them industrial townships are calling them and they are not going there is complete arrangement that is leading to compromise and leading to deaths so it is in this context we would like to get your views how do we bring a individual like a factory a factory the owner is responsible for any incident whereas a commercial building or a factory or anyone even the courts are saying that governments have to pay and then you recover from the private establishment so how do we change this whole scenario where one and out of second incident is completely uh, happening in the private uh, entities and even that has come out uh, during meghna's presentation too sir mathi sir you are yes sir yes sir yes. you have raised a very valid point sir that's our con concern collective concern that uh, majority of the deaths are happening in septic tanks which are in the private premises and it's a private dealing between the house owner and the sanitation agency or the individual sanitation worker so in if it is an individual sanitation worker it is his plight he has no other go somebody is offering a job and he is in such a pitiable condition it, he is risking he doesn't know that he is risking his life so he is in such a deprived condition if it is a private agency yes that agency is responsible that agency should have been licensed by the city or by the by the uh, block whichever is the administrative unit so the when we talk about emergency emergency response sanitation unit or responsible sanitation authority the scope cannot be confined only to the public systems public sewer lines or the sanitation system it should also cover the private so i don't find there is any different why why a ipc 30302 or 304 cannot be made applicable absolute if a septic tank is there in my house and if i am sending a sanitation worker inside and i am causing his head death i am an abettor to that crime absolute come is it absolute so our laws have to become more stringent yes and the people should be made responsible yeah i can't cause a death in my premises it's my yeah. my septic tank is my property yeah i can't force somebody so we need to bring in that kind of safety measures protective measures yes the state should come forward to protect the life of the sanitation workers the onus is on the state yeah. to come up with appropriate legislation that's my humble submission thank you sir so megna just a, a related point as i said the each group is typically 20 to 30 is a bulk and then 30 to 40 is the next chunk so below 40 is almost like 70% less deaths are happening now the average i'm not it's a very sad thing to say but the average cost of human life especially sanitation is pegged at 10 lakhs now are we relooking at this the cost of you know unless and until the cost of human life gets increased the compliance rate also will not increase people are getting away by mobilizing 10 lakhs in a gated community or in an apartment block and then solve the problem so if the cost of human life goes up to say 10 crores or 1 crore whatever you know it doesn't matter 
then there is a greater responsibility on all the stakeholders. Contraction sanitation, but I'm using an, an instrument to trigger a conversation. Why is it why it's so cheap to get away with 10 lakhs? Can we do something as a part of this Namaste scheme while we are looking at uh, uh, you know mechanization and so on and so forth? But I think as Mati sir said, it's also criminal offense. So are we looking at some of these aspects also? I mean, I'm not, I don't want to put you in a tricky situation, but I'm flagging this issue out of concern. Yes, sir. Mati sir. Since it is a tricky situation, I am volunteering. Yes, sir. Over to you. <laughs> sir, 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 we have come up with this scheme Gariba in September 2020. And we started the enumeration. In April 21, we encountered a, an accident in Katak City, sewer line cleaning, one incident, two deaths after Garima scheme implemented. So we issued an instruction to all our urban local bodies, all our functionaries, that if there is a death, the concerned engineer also will be prosecuted. So we, we fixed the accountability. Absolutely. And in a few field inspection, I myself found one fellow getting into that without following the due safety procedure protocols. The engineer was not present. We suspended that assistant engineer of the uh, municipal corporation in charge of that, the responsible sanitation authority. And for one year, he was under suspension. He has been importantly proceeded. I think that's a very powerful signal. We April, should from April 21 onwards till today, there has not, not been an incident. So there has to be deterrent measures. Yeah. If officials also become equally accountable and prosecutable along with the service provider, along with the premise owner, yeah. everybody should be booked, criminally booked. Then there will be some kind of awareness and some kind of sensitivity we, we can ensure. So last point, uh, Meghna so and Dinesh, my, or uh, Baba Sahib Sahib, last point, Meghna, over to you. Yeah, sorry. If I may just add to what Matisa said, um, I think we are not even reporting deaths as deaths of sanitation workers. If you look at all the media reporting of deaths of sanitation workers, um, it's actually tagged now as construction worker deaths that there was some new septic tank that was getting constructed and that's where the worker went. And I don't know why that person collapsed, right? So my worry is that if, even if you peg this number any way, even 10 lakhs, there's no cost to human life. I don't know how you peg that number. Even if you increase that, it's just going to put everything under the carpet much more. So I think I really agree that we have to put those deterrent measures and those enabling measures first. Otherwise, it's just going to keep going under the carpet uh, much more. Uh, Mr. Dinesh, anything, uh, final point from you? Of how do we deal with, how do we prevent in future? Of course, you have done a fantastic job, but uh, uh, other colleagues, other administrators, other cities. I mean, I, I totally agree with uh, uh, the comments made by Matisse as well. Uh, I, and we should also keep in, uh, they, there has to be some uh, deterrent measures that we need to take if at all there is any death of the sanitation workers. I mean, especially uh, if it is because of some callous attitude or negligence on, on part of the officials, because ultimately it is the corporation who is responsible for enforcing all these statutory things. But at the same time, uh, uh, I also want uh, the administrators uh, to uh, take all the stakeholders along in this journey because it, it, it strictly can't be enforced upon uh, on all the cities across the India. So if at all we want to do it, if at all we want to replicate across the India, we have to understand uh, the demands of each and every stakeholder, address them, and uh, maybe put up a mechanism uh, to take uh, different action if at all there is any. Uh, Lakhune in that uh, enforced. So, uh, I, I think uh, that, uh, that is what I would like to say. I think uh, uh, the concluding message is uh, there has to be a very strong deterrence. There has to be a greater accountability in the administrative system. And we need to strengthen ESRU, RSAs, the regulatory entities for uh, 
both from a district level as well as at the city level. Without this, there is always a short routes. There is a lack of accountability. I think uh, that is a key message coming out. Uh, uh, Baba Sahib Sahib, any final point? Otherwise, uh, I will, there are a lot of questions in the chat box and I request uh, Elizabeth to, uh, I hope we will be able to record those questions and pass on to the speakers as well as Meghna. Many questions are relevant to your presentation. So probably if you could uh, respond to some of them. Thank you very much. Uh, Baba Sahib, I, I didn't give you an opportunity. Would you like to say anything, final point? Otherwise, I will hand it over to Elizabeth. Uh, sir. Hello. Bol, sir. Bol sir. Bol sir. Sir, Navi Mumbai, as I said, Navi Mumbai, our main focus is that we have to start a certificate course. We have to start a course for Navi Mumbai. Uh Isli, ki baki corporation Jesa Apne notice kia, ki Navi Mumbai Bolke, Navi Mumbai Corporation ke Judiction ke Bahar ke jo issue jay, obi hame tackle karne perte. So unke pass certified workers, yane jo Safai Mitra Jinke pass certificate Marega, wo ha jake kam karengeto, wo unke train worker mile aisa who jay isile hamu course kare, or uske sat me jo hamare councils, chote chote council ya baki jo maharashtra me. उनको भी सर्टिफाइड लोग मिल गए तो थोड़ा सा नॉलेज भी रहेगा उनको और उनको सिर्फ एक बार ट्रेनिंग करके एक बार कॉन्फ्रेंस अटेंड करके इतना कॉन्फिडेंस आता नहीं इसलिए पूरा ट्रेनिंग और पूरा सर्टिफिकेट के पास साथ जो जाएंगे तो उनको भी कॉन्फिडेंस रहेगा और लोकल बॉडी को लगेगा कि हमने जो इसमें लिए है वो क्वालिफाइड है या सर्टिफाइड है या एक्सपीरियंस वाले है तो थोड़ा सा वो कंफर्ट रहेगा इसलिए वो हम कर रहे वो हमारा मेन फोकस है और दूसरा इन इनके हेल्थ इश्यू के बारे में क्योंकि हमने देखा है जब भी हम कैंप लेते हैं कैंप लेते समय वो शुरू में बोलते हैं कि हमें कुछ है ही नहीं वो रेडी भी होते नहीं है चेकअप के लिए लेकिन उनको किसी को ब्लॉकेज निकले कुछ किसी को कुछ अदर इश्यूज निकले तो वो निकलने के बाद उनको क्या लगता है कि समझो मुझे ब्लॉकेज निकला और मुझे एडमिट कर दिया तो मेरा इतना दिन का सैलरी जाएगा या मुझे छुट्टी लेनी पड़ेगी तो वो उनको पूरा कन्विंस करके उनको कॉम्पेंसेट करके और हमारे हॉस्पिटल में ही फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट सब करवा के दिया इसलिए वो बहुत खुश है तो उसको उसको भी हम ज्यादा फोकस कर रहे हैं थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच इसके साथ उनकी फैमिली भी हम कवर कर रहे हैं क्योंकि क्या होता है ये जो स्किन डिसीजेस है वो फैमिली में भी शेयर होते हैं और वो ये होते हैं तो इसलिए हम फैमिली को भी फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट ये करते हैं हमारे हॉस्पिटल में और हमारे साथ में जो टाइप हॉस्पिटल से जो ये क्या बोलते हैं प्राइवेट हॉस्पिटल ब्रांडेड हॉस्पिटल है उनके साथ भी टाइप करके हम वहां पे भी उनको ट्रीटमेंट उनकी ट्रीटमेंट करते हैं Thank you, Baba Sahib Sahib. I think uh, these are very, very valuable advice and what initiatives you're taking for all of us to replicate. Thank you, sir. Elizabeth. Yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Chari. And uh, with that, we've come to the end of our segment and would like to thank all the panelists for your fruitful insights in terms of, you know, the, our discussions on India's mechanization journey. And especially big thanks to you, Professor Chari, for seamlessly moderating this whole segment. Um, with that, we can conclude this session and we'll certainly, you know, share the recording and as well as next steps that have come from today. Uh, thank you all for your time. We'd also like to thank the NIOA U20 team for their support in taking this forward. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, and we hope to be connected soon.